Hello everyone, Scotty White of World Combat Sports. Hopefully everyone is enjoying their President's Day. Um, just returning from Nashville, Tennessee for the fight week they had up there, courtesy of PBC and TGB Promotions. So let's jump right into it. As I mentioned earlier, the main event was Caleb Plant against Vincent Figgenboots. And um, it was a pretty nice bout and fight card in general, to be honest. But he was, in, he was able to get the ninth round stoppage. His corner threw in the towel, basically, from the punishment that he was taking. He being the challenger, German fighter, Vincent Figgenboots. For those of you that's tuned in, hey, please smash the like button. I appreciate it. So besides that, the fight week wasn't that heavy this weekend. Um, you know, globally, there were some fights, you know, mixed martial arts and some other boxing matches. But I'm, I'm going to um, touch bases on this one. Then I'm going to, you know, talk about, you know, the Ryan Garcia situation that's going on with um, him in the lightweight division and what his status actually mean to the grand scheme of things when it comes to the top tier names like the Devin Haney's, Teofimo Lopez's, Facility Lomachenko's, you know, Javante Davis, you know, all these names that are, that are right there on the surface. And, you know, a lot of people are looking at Ryan Garcia's last bout and they're saying to themselves, um, he's ready for the big time. And we're going to talk about that later on. But let's go over what happened this past weekend. I want to start off, you know, um, with fighter, Bantamweight contender Rashid Baby Pitt Warren. Um, he fought 10 rounds this past weekend against Gilberto Men Mendoza. And it went the full 10 rounds. As always, you know, um, Rashid Warren is always in the fight. You know, he's he's always technically in the fight, not a brawler. He's a boxer. You know, if he doesn't have to get hit, he isn't going to get hit. Point blank, period. Um, Deion Washington, what's good? What's good? So, you know, he was able to get the win this weekend. And then I want to move up to Tyler Tomlin against Jose um, Zaragoza. And um, I believe um, Zaragoza took that. I was extremely busy. Uh, I don't have my right bout sheet. But I did pay attention to some in the process of doing pictures and everything else from the floor up in the stands. So Austin DeLay, he's a hometown favorite, you know, Nashville. He hosted a record of 13 and one. And with 10 knockouts, he went in there against Diego Magdaleno. You may have known him last year when he faced in a heated rivalry, Teofimo Lopez up in Frisco, Texas. Um, his record was 31 and 3, 13 knockouts. And of all the bouts on the undercard, really, to be honest, um, this was the one everybody was kind of looking forward to. Um, Austin Dulé, man, he was he was coming up. You know, he is coming up per se, but he had went in there and fought with an undefeated leisure of 11 and 0 against a 7 0 fighter in um You know, the highly touted prospect that's on the rise right now, Chris Colbert. And Chris Colbert stopped him. You know, the corner threw in the towel. So when it comes down to, 
You know, can he handle big challenges? Well, he stepped in there with another big challenge in Diego Magdaleno. Why I say it was a big challenge? Because he was in there at the top, you know, the, the top tier when he faced Teofimo Lopez. And, you know, if by chance he would have won that bout, it would have set him up for the title contention. So Magdaleno, you know, when I was interviewing him, I told him, I said, you know, I, I'm not sure if I see Austin Dulé ready for your experience, your strength, and just, you know, the pressure that you bring, you know, because Magdaleno has solid boxing pressure, period. You can't take that away from him. Plus, he's been on a big stage. And it took Teofimo Lopez seven rounds to stop Magdaleno. So I was kind of questioning not the heart of Austin Dulé, but I was just curious to see how much could he withstand. And when the bout started, you know, it was a filling out process just a little bit. What's going on, Chris Ray? What's good? What's good? Thanks for dropping in. You know, when the bout started filling out process and then um, Magdaleno, I believe in the third or fourth round, really started to kind of test the chest pressure of Austin Dulé. And it was times where he started to go to the body and he started to apply that punching power along with his his um, boxing pressure. And Dulé would circle out and reset without any type of response, like any action. And it got to a point where the crowd was like, OK, what's going on? OK, it's the early rounds. All right. It, it, it's just the early rounds. You know, we'll leave it at that. And then um, the, mid, the mid to later rounds came and Magdaleno pumped up the pressure and Dulé didn't have an answer for it. And, you know, his people was like, I don't know what they was telling him in the corner, but obviously it had to be a sense of, OK, let's take ownership. Of, you know what's going on. He's a very tough fighter. Um, I'm not sure if they kind of looked at him as that fighter who fought Teofimo Lopez. And if you did look at him as that fighter that lost, well, you know, Austin Dulé himself isn't Teofimo Lopez. But in boxing, sometimes they compare what the loss was to the fighter without comparing the fighter that's studying the real, you know, to the opponent that's in front of them. And Magdaleno really showed up. He really went in there and gave a boxing lesson to Austin Dulé to a point, it wasn't a clinic, it was a boxing lesson that there are levels to this sport and he's just on a whole nother level. He's just on a whole nother level. And even though he, he defeated Dulé, he was still respectful at the end and, and, and saying that, you know, he's a young pup in the game and he still has a ways to go. You know, he, he'll be just fine. But when the scorecards was um, read, I was wondering if Nashville, Tennessee would give Diego Magdaleno the win because obviously he he earned the victory, hands down, point blank, period. And yes, the scorecards came back and Magdaleno jumped up on the ropes and celebrated, in which he should. He fought a very solid fight, y'all. Give it up to Diego Magdaleno, man. I call that. I know a lot of people want to just go with the hometown guy, but um, with all respect to the late camp, um, I did not, you know, predict that he would go in there and defeat Magdaleno. So salute to Magdaleno for getting a win. Um, Brian um, Perella, he came in with a, a what you call a tuxedo kind of formal jacket, you know, as his ring walk attire. And Abel Ramos came in with the regular boxing attire. Uh, and, and the bout was good. You know, we're talking about Perella being 17 and 2, 14 knockouts to Abel um, Ramos, 25 and 3 and 2, 19 knockouts. Uh, slight disparity in experience. Ramos with more experience and more knockouts. But this was con contended at the welterweight division. And Ramos ended up doing just enough to break down. I guess the tyrant Perella, because Perella was strong in the early parts of the fight, 
But in the latter rounds, Ramos was able to break him down and legitimately, legitimately drop him and get the stoppage. Legit. It wasn't no fumbling around, you know, controversy. He literally came on in the later rounds, landing some solid work. He was using his combination and his body work well. And when it was it was time to go in for the kill, he did it. I have to, I have to, you know, that was an exciting fight. That was a co-main cool event. So I was like, cool, you know, salute to Ramos, man. Very entertaining fight. Moving on to the main event, Caleb Plant versus Vincent Figan Boots. I've heard Figan Boots, Figan Boots, okay? Anyway, it's Boots, all right? So Caleb Plant, of course, was 19 and 0, unblemished, 11 knockouts, and 31 and 2, with 28 knockouts is Fegan Boots. And you're saying to yourself heading into this fight, wow, Caleb Plant, you know, he's going in there with a, a pretty tough mandatory that they just snuffed out from the bottom of the bucket. And, you know, 31 and 2, 28 knockouts, but most of them has been outside the U.S. perimeter. You know what I'm saying? So this guy coming over here, not too many people know him, and he has experience. He used to be a world champion. You know, and him and Caleb Plant had words on social media and, you know, social social media is not really a forte of Caleb Plant. During the press conference, the two was going back and forth. Um, Vegan Boots set the tone, taking the mic first with his interpreter and basically saying that he took the fight on short notice. And that pissed off Caleb so bad. Caleb was like, nah, you're not you're not about to come in here and talk about, you know, the fight was taken on short notice. Me and you had about 10 weeks, which we known about this fight. Ample amount of time for both of us to hit training camp and get it in and prepare for this moment. So when Caleb stepped up there, he thanked everybody. You know, he, he basically said he was willing to do anything to keep his title as far as hard work and dedication. And he was looking forward to tonight. And he said, but what I want you to understand is that, you know, Vincent is lying. Coming up here saying already with excuses that he took the fight on short notice, which that is absolutely not true. And he has a he has a manager with him, um, Fegan Boots, who has white hair like Ric Flair. And he kind of looks like a slender Ric Flair, much taller. And he was the man for the job, man. You know, I, we don't know if Fegan Boots was actually saying what this guy was in, um, interpreting, you know, translating to us. But it was funny, man, because um, Caleb Plant had mentioned he turned over and looked at Vincent. And if you didn't see him holding the, the helmet, him and the mascot, mascot was walking around the entire week promoting the football team. So Caleb Plant basically said, yeah, I'm telling him to bring that helmet because he's going to need it. You know, he's going to be punching them in the head. And then something was asked to the extent. Um, what what was asked? What, what, what did they ask his manager? Oh, how did he plan on um, beating Caleb Plant? And then the manager said, yeah, he, 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 he talks shit. Um, I punch him. You know, it was it was it was funny because it was just short and broken. You know, the the narrative and his response was just like broken. But we got the point on what he was trying to say. Plus, he's German and we expect it. We, we got it. But getting to the fight, of course, you know, if you're looking at the thumbnail, you know, that's when I was um, catching Team Caleb plant leaving the t um, tunnel awaiting. You know, the guy to his right, as you're looking at it, to your left, um, I guess he's a local hip-hop artist. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't, I didn't really know who he was, but they're waiting at the tunnel. And um, it wasn't too much left of that. They went to the tunnel, to the cheers of the hometown crowd, which really, listen to me, this crowd, we just had a fight in December with Javante down here. And I will have to, you know, this was Caleb's first time coming home. And that Nashville crowd really lit the place up. Like, they really cheered Caleb Plant on. They cheered on 
two other fighters that was on the undercard. They did an awesome job, man. Awesome job. And, you know, when Austin DeLay came in, man, they was cheering so loud for Austin DeLay. I mean, that kind of filtered away during the fight a little bit because he wasn't that active. But the crowd was really paying attention to what was in front of them. And when Caleb Plant came in, man, they was giving it. They were serenading him with that support. And when he got in the ring, before then, his wife had sung the national anthem. She blew that out the water. It was a very nice um, fight night, to be honest. Um, very satisfying, you know, to be in Nashville. That was Caleb Plant first time fighting in his hometown, believe it or not. That's crazy, ain't it? That was his first time fighting in his hometown, and it was in defense of his IBF title, super middleweight title for 12 rounds. So um, the bout start, I really got some good nuggets, you know, after I explain this fight. Um, the fight starts, and Caleb Plant comes out active on the bezel, on the timepiece, clocking in, getting getting off with his combinations. I like how, you know, Caleb Plant technically, you know how you see some people, if they don't use the jab, they may lead with that power shot, right? I will have to say, you know, Caleb Plant does a superb job if he's going to throw his, his, his um, power shot without setting it up with a jab, it's done through um, fantastic feints. You know, he, he has superb distance when he's throwing that power shot, not, not just to throw it outside the distance so it goes and whistle by or it's just a waste of energy for him to do it. He knows how to gauge the speedometer as far as his speed when he's stepping in with that power shot. And he was able to land early on Figgin Boots. And for the first, I would say, three or four rounds, Caleb Plant was just having his way with this guy. This guy was literally a mobile mannequin. If you wanted to look back online about the mannequin challenge, this was about to do it. You know, the fighter that actually made the bout somewhat entertaining was Caleb Plant in the first half because Fegan Boots was acting like he was going to stall this man out like it was a Rocky movie. And then come hard and cold, you know, come 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 hard in the back end of the fight and be a cold-hearted killer. And then when you get when you get to the sixth or seventh round, Caleb Plant is really answering the bell. You know, Fegan Boots, he was standing 12 to 6 between every round. Caleb was sitting on the stool like we do. When the when the bell rang, the seventh round, Caleb starts off quick i'm talking about gas nozzle handle in the diesel is going into the fuel he's gassing it all cylinders are working he's really giving a high punch output to freaking figan boots and figan boots really didn't have an answer to it y'all he was just taking punishment and then he would have success you know periodically you know he would have success in landing one shot here one shot there and when he he did land it counted you know what i'm saying but caleb plant made him miss a lot probably more than you saw back home watching it on tv but he made figan boots miss a, an, an awful lot which showed his superb defense um, i'm not sure if you've seen when caleb plant was backed up to the ropes and figan boots was throwing he he must have basically executed probably 12 punch combination while Caleb Plant was on the ropes and he, he may have touched him twice out of the 12 and after it was over with Caleb Plant blew him a kiss you know which the crowd went crazy and then Figan Boots returned it I guess it was one of those Valentine gestures you know what I'm saying in the sport of boxing you know Caleb Plant was trying to you know let his opponent know that you and my you in my world right now you in my town too so I'm just showing you hospitality. But it was some entertaining parts of the fight, to be honest. It was very entertaining. The eighth and ninth round, when it came up to the stoppage, Caleb Plant had had so much success with landing shots on the tough, you know, 
durable, um, was in there to lag to go the distance. It's no way that he was planning on going down. I don't think if he would have stayed in there the 10th, 11th, and 12th round, he would have been dropped. He's just a tough, tough fighter, you know, like a lot of Russian, German, you know, they're very tough fighters. And that's exactly what we've seen. We've seen Fegan Boots able to go in there, take a lot of punishment with Caleb, and don't, don't get it twisted. Don't think because Caleb couldn't drop him that he don't have punching power. Um, Caleb was landing some solid, punctual shots, man. His appointments, every time he got off on his combinations, was very respectable, very methodical, and the strategy was there. Keep the pace up, keep the speed, and work this dude. And that's exactly what Caleb did. And I absolutely enjoyed the fight. Um, the pictures, you know, were shot from a higher level. Um, I couldn't shoot ringside, but it's just the whole point of being there and being able to shoot the, shoot the card in general. You know what I'm saying? Um, just to broaden my media perspective. But if you look on, you know, my Facebook, I posted some of the pictures out there on Facebook. And I'll be continuing to do that. As the weeks go out, I'm not going to post all of them in one set because, you know, people just don't look at all those pictures at one time. They see too many. But Caleb Plant, um, in my opinion, had one of the best performances of his boxing career. He improved his record, his boxing register, the 20 and 0. And, you know, after the fight was stopped in the ninth round, of course, the post fight came up and he was asked what's next you know after they talked about how he went in there and performed in front of his hometown crowd um we already know the adversity that caleb plants has, have faced you know in in the last two years it has just been rough real talk it has been absolutely rough for caleb but in uh, on this day this weekend he was in pretty good spirits with the interviews you know um staying um you know, out of sight, out of mind, unless it was a presser. I was actually on the elevator with Caleb and his team, but he said no no recording, you know, no recording, especially if his wife was around. Uh, I don't think his wife was on the elevator at that time, but besides that, man, the presser was decent. The weigh-ins, the two wasn't, wouldn't stop looking at each other. They tried and tried to try to get them to break and look at the camera. Finally, Caleb did. Um, same thing happened at the press conference. But the post fight, Caleb Plant made it clear, like he told me last year at the MGM, that he wanted David Benavidez. He said a while ago when David won his title, he was standing at the bottom of the stairs and he called him out. He said, hey, I want that shot. And, and David Benavidez, Benavidez act like he was all about entertaining it. You know what I'm saying? Kevin Moore, thanks for dropping in, man. Thanks for dropping in. Um, I agree. It was a good fight. And he won. He, he made it perfectly put an exclamation with a needle point on the end that he indeed would like to unify the super middleweight division against David Benavidez. Will it happen? Um, we will wait. We will wait till the powers that be in boxing. Um, give us the nod. Because um, I believe Benavidez, I don't know if he has a fight coming up, but if they was to attempt to have Caleb Plant fight less than, what, eight-week camp, being he just got out of a full fight camp, he'd be a, a bit overworked and... If he turns it down, which Caleb Plant had mentioned this, he say they may try to say they want to fight me next, but give me a short fight camp. And if we turn it down, then they'll say, hey, Caleb Plant is ducking us. We gave him an offer, but they're not going to put in the fine details, you know, how, how many weeks he's going to have in camp. It's really up to Caleb Plant's team to get him in camp and see if he's refreshed enough to go back in a hard camp without getting injured. And face the WBC Super Middleweight Champion, David Benavidez. So y'all stay tuned for that. And I will definitely keep you posted.
Um, check out the thumbnails. These are some of the steals that I was able to get from the fight. But stay close to that. Stay close to it. But shout out to um, both fighters. Vegan Boots was actually a pretty nice dude, man. Um, they had been there for a couple of weeks, I believe, and um, got to experience the Nashville, Tennessee, um, you know, recreational life. Um, the strip, the Broadway was pretty cool. I actually went down there a bit. But, you know, they was over here. They had chauffeurs. They had um, freaking chaperones to take them around so they can see the, this life over here and see how different it is from Germany. I actually been over to Germany. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about certain things um, that I was in, into over there. That, um, you know, met a couple women over there. You know, went to some clubs in Germany. I had a nice time over there. Real talk. I'm just waiting for that 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 fighter to step in the ring and be like, "Huh? Yeah, you look like me." <laughs> no, anyway, but um, it was a great time. And Kayla Plant, shout out to Kayla Plant. You know, keeping this title and moving on to the next twenty and zero. You know, twenty and zero, and he's doing it the right way. And I'm going to tell you, um, anybody sleeping on Caleb Plant as far as his boxing skills, continue to do so. Because you're going you're gonna to be in for a rude awakening if you believe Benavidez is going to go in here and just outbox a fighter like Caleb Plant. Because he has, you know, the taller reach, the height advantage, and potentially a longer reach. And Caleb Plant is a very crafty, slick fighter, yo. You need to, you y'all need to understand that when you see this in person, you know, just like I was telling people about Javante Davis, you need to see some of this in person to know what's actually going on. I mean, you see these fighters work in the ring, it's quite different. So hopefully that happens. So what's this out here? Because I wasn't able to check out any of the fights, but What's this I hear about this 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 guy called from Ryan Garcia that's making a big stink because he went in there and stopped a guy who wasn't considered anyone who was heading to you know the promised land amongst the champions who was going to shake up the game? I mean, where where is all this coming from though? I mean, what did y'all think about Ryan Garcia's performance? Help me out. Help me figure it out. What did y'all think about Ryan Garcia's performance? I'm going to put it to you like this. You know, apart from the press conference, the post, post fight presser, Ryan Garcia, look, Ryan Garcia, as young as he is, that's going to that's gonna be on his side. All right? Ryan Garcia is 21 years old. 21 years old, y'all. And he's 20 and 0 and 17 knockouts. His big fight date is coming, y'all. That's from him being active the last several years. His day is coming. He's 20 and 0 and only 21 years old. So he stepped in there against Francisco Fonseca. You know, his record was 25 and 2 and 2. Listen, when you when you see a record with two and two, all you have to do is assess how he lost. You know what I'm saying? Tevin Farmer beat him and freaking Javante Davis beat him. Period. Javante Davis beat him in round eight. Now a lot of people's on here chit-chattering and saying, well, guess what? Javante Davis, it took him eight rounds to beat Francisco Fonseca. But then Ryan Garcia goes in here and the man lays out like he's freaking at an oasis in the Bahamas. He just lays out. And in one round, there's no way that you're telling me Francisco Fonseca is basically that fighter that fought Ryan Garcia. That's just like Mason Menard. Look, Mason Menard goes eight rounds with Devin Haney. And then Mason Menard steps in there with Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo squashes him in one round. I'm telling you, y'all, these fighters 
are capitulating to their position of order. When these fighters come back in there and they're facing a big name, they may receive much a, a little bit more under the table and say, you know what? We're in the same division as Javante Davis. Guess what? He's a rising star. Ryan Garcia is a rising star. So what we need to do is have some comparison for if we ever meet. So Fonseca goes in here and and, and pull the rip card in, in the first round. Now he have a little bit of bragging rights on Javante Davis for that particular opponent. Because to be honest, Ryan Garcia doesn't, doesn't have any other areas that he can even pick up for conversation. Javante Davis is a freaking three-time world champion. Period. Period. You can take the flash all day long. Hear me when I tell you this today. If Ryan Garcia and Javante Davis fights the way Ryan Garcia is boxing right now, that erect, stand tall boxing style, um, using his freaking visual optics and believing that he can basically see everything that's inbound and the way he stands erect, if he does that with Javante Davis, he will go to sleep like three ambience he will go to sleep i look at the way he's fighting and he's basically standing flat-footed a lot of times and he's waiting for the counter now i understand that they have a dynamic on what speed does with timing and what timing do, does for speed i get it but when you're standing in there with a hard-hitting puncher that can box and move and has that superb agility to go in there and move you with the jab, Ryan Garcia is going to have to really think about playing B and C because right now he's just standing in the pocket. Um, he waited for a counter this fight against an easy fighter who he was just waiting on and waiting on. It was easy. Just like I told you about, just say, for instance, Danny Garcia against um, Brandon Rios. Brandon Reyes goes in there. You know, he was trying to talk the fight up. We all know Brandon Reyes is, is taking punishment in his career. You know, I believe he has early stages of pugilistica, you know, a little bit of slurring here and there. But he was tailor-made for Danny Garcia. And that's exactly what Danny Garcia, when he threw that right hand, it was a wrap. You know? He was tailor-made. The styles was tailor-made for one another to go in there and for one fighter to shine at that moment. Taylor, tailor-made. So when we look at Fonseca, the way he, he stood in the pocket and attempted to trade with the more sharper, quicker fighter Ryan Garcia, he paid the price. But I just don't believe, just like I didn't believe Sergey Kovalov and Canelo Alvarez knockout, I truly don't believe Francisco didn't have anything left in the tank. That's just me. That's just me, fight fans. I definitely would like to hear your opinion, but that's just what I believe with Ryan Garcia. Now, apart from everything else, Ryan Garcia is a is a um, you know, a household name. Over there. I don't know how long he's going to be over there, Golden Boy. But when, it, when you look at his selling star power, um, Ryan Garcia, you know, he's going to be something special when he finally starts to grow up. I mean, 21 years old. Um, look, he has such a broad landscape, don't he? Man, his, his, his boxing layer. It's just amazing right now. Be 21 years old with a record like that? You know, just like all the young hitters are up here. Javante, Devin Haney. The only young hitter that's missing from the, from the party that need the RSVP quick is Shakur Stevenson. Man, could you imagine Shakur Stevenson saying, you know, I'm going to vacate my title. And I'm moving all the way up to light heavyweight because right now I need to show some people what they've been missing. If Shakur Stevenson was up there at lightweight right now, 
I'm telling the lightweight division would be the hottest division in boxing. It wouldn't be the, um, the welterweight because they have too many people that don't want to fight each other. Too many champions that's on the other side of the freaking quarry. You know, they can't they can't cross because it's too much water in between. But we have a lightweight division with a lot of freaking entertaining talent that potentially would face each other. You know, we have Teofimo Lopez. We've seen him come up through the rise and he had one bad bout against a um, tall, tough Japanese fighter. And people's like, oh, man, he didn't look that good. He didn't look that good. He's going to be in trouble. And then, he, he, you know, he gets rid of the, you know, the personal, the additional stress that he had in his life. He ended up marrying his girlfriend, his fiance. He came back against a fighter who already knew he was going to fight last year, February. Um, somehow, some way, the plans changed for Teofimo Lopez because I can see it now. Teofimo Lopez was supposed to be the one to fight for that WBC title. He was supposed to. But somehow, some way, they gave Teofimo Lopez the sit-down card because he was getting a little bit ahead. You know, certain people were saying certain things about, you know, they was they was looking out for Lomachenko. Teofimo Lopez had called him a bitch twice in the media. He was really being disrespectful to the to the to the cash cow over there. So I guess they kind of gave him a timeout card, and he didn't get the title fight. For the WBC, then he had to fight a couple more times, and he stepped in there with Richie Richard Comey, and he went in there and destroyed Richard Comey in two rounds. And now, him and freaking Facility Lomachenko, for all the marbles, for all the marbles except the green one, they will be able to fight. Now, as I mentioned before, y'all, let's get it straight. Let's get it straight in my quote that I made a point to say. Teofimo Lopez is basically contending for the WBA, WBO, all right? And it stops. Right? Because we don't know who's going to have the WBC. And no way did he get the franchise belt if he defeats Facility. So if Teofimo was able to unify the division, it would be for the WBA and WBO. Now, on the other hand, for Facility Lomachenko, if he picks up that IBF from the way the rules were mentioned, you know, and um, we're talking about rules that really not based off a solid um, format of criteria. It's nothing for us to say, you know, whether we source this information, what can we base it off of? And it's just too much out there as far as just off the cuff type of impromptu type i'm not saying that wbc president did that but i'm saying in general in relation to what we're used to seeing across the board per sanctioning bodies this differs very much so it differs so much to the point where if you're saying facility lomachenko cannot lose his franchise belt and then if he goes in here and defeat teofima lopez he becomes the undisputed lightweight champion even though he's absent of the wbc super belt that's facts that is facts y'all but but if by chance i'm going for teofimo lopez uh, the facility machinko belts get lifted teofimo lopez is not considered the undisputed champion of the lightweight division because the wbc super is the final strap and badge that he has to earn inside the square. So if it's Luke Campbell or Javier Fortuna at the time, it's up to and dependent on Facility Lomachenko to make a decision on if he want to stand, stay down here in lightweight and try to fight for the undisputed titles. It will have to be a, a, a paycheck big enough for him to say, you know what, it's worth it. It's worth it to him and Lopez Sr., his mom, his wife, all that. Is it worth it for him to stay in the lightweight division? And that would be a question asked among sober minds 
because they're pretty much content to move up to 140. They're pretty much content to make that happen. Like they was content a while ago, but um, they've been waiting for this IBF title. So keep your keep your hands together, you know, with a soft, subtle prayer and see if this goes down the way it should be. What we know for a fact is that the fight this year is taking place between Lomachenko and Lopez. And we will have a legitimate face to the unification of the lightweight division, either Lomachenko or Lopez. We'll see. But I can tell you right now, outside of that belt, when you're talking about Ryan Garcia and who he was he was calling out, you know, he wanted to call out Javante Davis before he called out Devin Haney. Um, you, hey, you can go ahead and play that fiddle all you want. You know, you're playing the fiddle when you should be playing the drums. Because if you step in there with Javante, Javante Davis, um, that's what's going that's the sound and 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 thudding that you're gonna hear. Because he's a he's a he's a hard hitting fighter. And just because he might not knock you down, you know, the first couple of combinations he land, as you've seen in your York is Gambor, Javante Davis stays on the hunt. He stays on the hunt. Don't get it twisted. If he got tired, in which he did take some rounds off, he's still on the hunt. That's real. He's still on the hunt, y'all. And for Ryan Garcia to, to announce Javante as if he's just another guy up here coming up through the ranks with him, I want, I want him to pretty much believe what he got to believe, man. Because you're not going to convince me that Ryan Garcia goes in there and defeat Javante Davis just by staying on the outside. And if he choose to fight the way he's been fighting for quite some time, stand in the pocket and want to be a counter puncher, please, by all means, go ahead. Go ahead. Stand in the pocket with Javante. I would love to see your speed. I would love to see every part of that video played out in real time inside the four corner quadrant. Show us, Ryan Garcia, that you can do that. And now for Devin Haney, even him, Devin Haney has to go in there and prove that he's tough enough and durable enough to be in there with a grimy, vindictive champion like Javante Davis. Javante Davis is, is nothing short of a savage when he's in there. So y'all might want to understand that. Ryan Garcia, you know, Ryan Garcia, he's playing, you know, I, I, he's playing to the crowd and everything. I like it. He's talking trash. Him and Devin Haney getting in the ring, same thing I saw with Sean Porter and Errol Spence. I'm like, okay, here we go again. It's not going to mean much, but go ahead and get in there. And also, Devin Haney's injured, right? So I'm not, I'm saying to myself, why are you even in the ring? Like, why are you in the ring for Ryan Garcia when your title is on the playground at recess and all the kids are, are, are building little woodchuck, um, little tent, tent moles around it? Why it's on recess? Why are they taking your belt and sliding it down the freaking sliding board, taking it over there on the monkey bars and seeing how strong it is? You know what I'm saying? They have your belt right up underneath the seesaw to see if it's, it's, it's tough. You know, they wearing your belt around, jumping all in the grass, sliding, doing all that. Your belt's on recess, man. You know what I'm saying? What does a belt do when it's on recess? Go hang out in the public restroom? Because that is the cleanest place around now. I mean, where do you go with the WBC recess belt? Where do you take it? We, we need answers. We need answers as to where the belt is taken. Because we need to know if Devin Haney is jumping in here with Ryan Garcia, when is Devin set as the recess champion that we never, ever heard in any type of bylaws or scriptures or any manuals coming up in the sport of boxing that it was a such title and nomenclature of recess champion? You should have stripped him. You promoted him, first of all. He didn't win the title. 
you promoted him and then allowed him to face his mandatory. No, he faced one guy and then it's time for him to face his mandatory. And what? It, it, he's out too long, so he, you you had to um, partially strip him and add a secondary term to the to to the um the action. Just do it. Just use your action. If you're stripping him, strip him, and then when it comes time, showing love and getting back in there with the champion to fight it out. If it's Luke Campbell, okay. If it's Javier Fortuna, cool. Whatever. I'm done with that, man. Um, you know. Y'all, y'all, y'all get y'all together and um, make a fight happen. You know, Ryan, Ryan Garcia ain't fo- fooling me. And you know what? If Ryan Garcia makes it the 25 and 0, if Ryan Garcia makes it the 25 and 0, I would be absolutely utterly totally shocked because i do believe ryan garcia is going to take an l in his next in his next five fights he's going to take a one l somewhere because he's young and he's coming out just like you know canelo he's trying to get in there with the top tier names and he really won't be that guy to make a big ticket in the right area and bring all his fans his million dollars his millions of fans that's on social media and allow them to support them. We just don't know who it would be and where it would be. That's the big question. Um, but yeah, you know, y'all, y'all stay tight to the mic. You know, keep your ears to the mic. It's going down one way or the other. We'll see it. Um, Joshua Grid Jr., shout out to you. He he finally posted that he has a fight coming up in April. You know what I'm saying? That's that's gonna be good to see him get back in the in the ring, I do consider him, you know, one of the um, best battle weights out there. So he just left John Pullman out there in California. He he was out there at um, Chicago, and um, he was training out there before because that's where he's from, Shawtown. And then he left and went out there to uh, John Pullman. He was training out there. Now he's back. Joshua Jr. is twenty-two and one and one. 12 knockouts, bantamweight division. You know, some of his opponents, you know, he had the much heated grudge match against Glenn Desern, y'all. I mean, it was going back and forth. It was heated doing the weigh-ins. Desern lost his cool and pushed him, pushed Joshua Grid. And Joshua didn't do anything, but Joshua did end up stop, stopping him in um, their bout, you know. Giovanni Delgado, we all seen what happened in that fight. Daniel Lozano stopped him too. Giovanni Eskiner stopped him. Nikolai Poptovov. Um, Nikolai Poptovov, of course, Russian fighter. He went the distance with Joshua Greer Jr. Um, the crowd over there in Newark, New Jersey, because Joshua Greer Jr. was fighting on Shakur Stevenson on the card. Um, they was booing. But I'm going to tell you, um, that, that Newark crowd over there, that boxing crowd is very, very tough um that's a very tough place over there in newark at the prudential center to go box so if you're a boxer that's tuning in to the pc podcast if you plan on going over to newark and box be sure that um don't get perturbed that you hear some booze when you walk into the ring because they are very very easy on the throttle when it comes to booing somebody they don't know believe that Antonio um, Nevis, you know, went the distance with him. Um, it's a good fight. Um, next, he has Jason Maloney. Um, Jason Maloney is 20 and 0, and this is going to be at the Mandalay Resort and Casino, Las Vegas. You know, and, and, and this is not freaking an easy touch, as you call it. It's not an easy touch for Josh Greer. Um, looks like a solid fighter, 29 years old. And um, he has some, you know, KOs. Out of his last four, he has he's he's um, three out of four with KOs. His one loss was for 
to a, the former champion, Emmanuel Rodriguez, who, you know, when I first interviewed Joshua Greer, I figured he was going that route for Emmanuel Rodriguez. I think who, who owned the IBF championship at the time, but come to find out, no, it wasn't Emmanuel Rodriguez. So he lost a split decision. So that should tell you right there. He lost a split decision, Emmanuel Rodriguez. And um, since then, 2019, he had t um, three three stoppages. And now he's facing Josh Greer Jr. And um, this is going to be good. I'm pretty sure Josh Greer is going to step up to the plate and put on a superb performance, man. So shout out to Don't Blink, Mr. ESPN. Absolutely. So what's going on, people? You know, y'all quiet. It's presidential day. You know, y'all been drinking too much all day. Y'all can't y'all can't type on the keyboard. What y'all had to eat today? You know, you got the itis. Some of y'all probably got that itis. Just have a message come on. They, that ain't no problem. You know, you're always going to have trolls. If your channel don't have trolls every now and then, you're not doing something right. What's going on? Rich and Faith TV in the building. Y'all be sure to follow him. He's down there doing big things, collaborating with Ear Hustle 404, you know, so they can get the word out about multiple to topics down here in the Atlanta region. You know, we're trying to get boxing on a whole nother level of notoriety. That's what's going on down here in the A. But shout out to Rich and Faith TV, man. Keep doing what you do. What other fights are, are, are coming up? The big fight this weekend, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, of course. Big heavyweight showdown. It's going to be a lot for boxing, y'all. This fight is huge. There's so many people going to make money and lose money on this fight. I don't believe that. It's, it's the magnitude of this fight is just big because... The winner gets set is, is set up to potentially face a unification bout. There's a rematch clause already in, implemented for Tyson Fury, but this this fight on all levels of, of, of magnification, you know, on the grand scale is huge. It's just so big, man. Like the scale of an eleventh defense for Deontay Wilder, and then Tyson Fury going in here to right the wrong. Believing that he was victorious in the first go round, he was on the canvas in the twelfth round, but got up and did fairly well to close out the final tick. So really, you know, it, it is a big fight, and and people, I'm gonna tell you like this: it may not go as you think it's gonna go. All right, remember I said that it may not go as you believe it. Or if you desire it to go, it may not. It may not even be close to what you think. Um, Rich and Face said, "Just here listening for sure." Thanks for stopping in, man. Salute to you, Chad Mullen. Hey, Chad Mullen. I'm not. I'm not sure who who you are, but myself, I run my own channel. World Combat Sports is independent. I'm from I'm by myself. So I know it's a lot of people that have ghost accounts and come over here and ask about, you know, black media and always putting us with LDBC. LDBC salute to them. Do what they got to do. But I'm not LDBC. I will never be LDBC. I don't have a problem with what they're doing, but I'll do what I do. I talk about boxing and MMA, and that's just what it is. Moving on. Um, Fury got robbed the first fight. Don't, don't you know. If he got robbed, I'm pretty sure this time around he'd be able to right the wrong. Period. Rich and Faith TV said, So, how you do think the fight is gonna go? I'm gonna leave that to the to the end of the week because look, this is only Monday. This is only Monday. This is an entire fight week. Vegas is lit right now. This is an entire fight week for the biggest fight of the century. 
And there's no way that I'm giving a prediction five times this week because I might change this, that, and the other. It might, it might go out in the first round. It might be in the second. But like I tell you, it's not going to go the way you believe. That's all I'm saying. I've been hearing a lot of people on here. They're afraid to commit. And this is one thing as media I do. I commit to what I'm, I'm going to be. If I'm going to commit to one fighter, I'm going to tell you why I'm committing. But it's a lot of people that just refuse to commit to one side of the venue. Support your fighter. Which one are you gloving up for the fight? Which one? You, you can't glove up both. Which one is going to be your favorite for this fight? You got to take what you've seen already. You have to take what episodes of freaking Showtime PBC has put out. You got to look at Tyson Fury. You got to look at Deontay Wilder. You just got to blend the two. You know, pick out the bits and pieces that's important. Mesh together all the, the, the conducive variables that goes along with winning the fight. And give your summation. Who is going to pull this out? Is Tyson Fury going to be able to go in there two rounds and say he's going to knock out Deontay? Or, you know, Deontay may, may come in there and just totally convince Tyson Fury that the first time was the only and, and the best time that you had to get me out of there. Plus, I was coming off a broken arm. So this time around, my weight is good. I'm coming back off a short fight camp from knocking the bejesus out of freaking Luis Ortiz. So now he's coming back healthier, already in shape. Didn't have to do too much this training camp to face Tyson Fury, who looks in phenomenal shape. Tyson Fury looks in phenomenal shape for this fight. So I don't want to hear no excuses of him saying he's going to come in here 19 stone, which is close to 270 pounds. We don't want to hear no bullshit like that. We don't want to hear any of excuses that you're planning on picking up weight so you can get on the inside and hopefully to smother Deontay Wilder's punches and to work your own inside bunch boxing. That's the only way people pull up weight. People don't put on weight just to stay on the outside and say, okay, let me show you how a freaking um, – a milk truck moves. You know what I'm saying? Let, let, let me show you how a milk truck moves. It's not going to happen. Chad Munn say, okay. Um, Chad, Chad Mullen, I guess you um, are somewhat a troll. So let me do you this favor right here. Because I do have that access. That That does nothing for me, man. You know, you just got to take care of them. Don't give them much shine. You know, treat them like a freaking piece of gum on the bottom of your shoe. It'll be sticky for a moment, but once all that residue down there from you twisting it back and forth, smashing them into the freaking ground, walk through some piss, some dog poop, they'll get the picture. But anyway, that's, that's what I see. You know, I'm not going to say everything tonight because the fight is all... But I can tell you this, it's going to be a um, hellacious week. I ask that you all tune in um, closely for um, Deontay Wilder content, Tyson Fury content, you know, boxing in general. We are on the eve of one of the biggest boxing matches in history. Not just in boxing, this is one of the biggest, largest boxing matches in the history of the sport in the heavyweight division. The heavyweights are always run the sport, y'all. They have always run the sport. And even though we had that hiatus of about a decade where Vitaly and, and Vladimir um, was able to run the sport, um, the heavyweight boxing scene for us is back. For the, for the U.S. heavyweights are back. And that's what this is doing right now, bringing this fight to the grand stage of the MGM um, you can only imagine how, how much star power is going to be in the building and, you know, what the arena is going to feel like once both fighters start their ring walk. Tyson Fury has some pretty entertaining ring walk. 
but it's nothing comparable to the to the battle formation when Deontay Wilder come in there with his his suit, like he's a ruler, like he's marching his army, his his soldiers, three brigade brigades. He's marching into the battlefield to do do battle, while they sit there and watch him go to war against another king, another ruler. I mean, that's the best part of it, man. Besides the fight, the ring walk. So y'all stay tuned, man. It's gonna, it's gonna be exciting. And this this fight week, man. This is absolutely fight week for show. Tyson Fury, former unified champion, never defended a single belt. You know, pop for recreational drugs and pets and all that other stuff. And then you have Deontay Wilde, it's quite the opposite. You know, he's been pretty out of sight, out of the mind. Very disciplined. Um, been maintaining his his brand and who he is as a person. And that's real good. Hasn't came up being suspected of popping dirty like so many other fighters have. But yet he's given fighters the opportunity who pop dirty to fight them. Because truly deep down inside, uh, he don't care. He believes he still has enough skills to go out there and pay the bills. That's what I see with Deontay Wilder. You, you, he may have heard you popping and everything like that, but truly a fighter like that, he still believes that even if you inject your chin with pads, it's not going to do your chin any good. You can in, put injection right up there on your chin. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they do, it's not going to allow you when that glove touch you up and it's on the freaking end from the sorcerer himself, the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. Um, I just don't know how you're going to go about, you know, reassessing the way to get your bodily functions together. You know, the R word recovery. How are you going to yell out to the EMT? Because the EMT is is next to the, the ring. But when when Tyson Fury was out in the fourth round, I'm pretty sure the, TM, the, um, the EMT looked like they was in the back. Because he was his eye was in the back of his head. He was just dreaming about the EMT. But he got up and fought. And I'm not sure if you all, speaking of that count, I'm not sure if you all checked out the video, but um, I did indeed get in contact. I'm not getting in contact, but I did sit down with referee Jack Reese because it was an important part of me as media to be more defining in interviews. And that's exactly what I wanted to do with Jack Reese. I wanted to sit down and talk to him about the controversy. I, it, it was no short short phrases to it. I said, I got to talk to you about the controversy. Um, we talked last time, but they was waiting on the fight, so I really couldn't get in detail. But this time, I called him at the right time. And he was an ups, outstanding, uh, upstanding guy. We went into a room. It's just me and him. And he listened to everything I had to say. And I asked for you all to go in there and check out the video if you haven't already did it. Um, you will hear me say, well, Jack Reese, I thought it was a long count. Uh, he, he looked at me quite funny when I said that, but I'm just being honest. I'm not doing it for views. I'm just, I told him I thought it was a long count. Uh, it's up to you to explain otherwise because my long count um, assumption is more so off the timekeeper. You know what the what the count was on on the ringside, vice what he picked up, and was he in rhythm? Was he in rhythm with the count? Like we can count the ten, and in, in thirty seconds, one gimme gimme gimme, two simmy 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 simmy, three. You know, it's a way that we can count to 10. And by the time we get there, shit, Tyson Fury could have went to the bathroom, took a crap and came back. So, okay, cool. I'm ready. I'm ready, ref. But Jack Reese sat down. He was cool, respectful. I was respectful. I actually learned some things about the referee um, manual. You know what I'm saying? That he was showing me. Hey, listen, Jack Reese did show me some things on the fight. And I, I, I don't care what certain fighters or whoever you are. That the love to always say, well, you know, he did an interview with Jack Reese, but 
he's coming up with excuses for what Jack Reese did. I'm not coming up with any excuses. I'm just telling you that I was able to get the interview and he told me what he told me. He shed some light on certain areas of his decision making. I also asked him about the spirit that he was talking about doing it for the spirit of the rules, um, the spirit of the of the law of boxing. I've never heard that before. When he said, I'm doing it for the spirit of the law, I'm like, where's this coming from? Like, what are you talking about exactly, the spirit of the law? And he explained that. This way it gets a little fuzzy just a little bit because he said the spirit of the law is common sense. Common sense in, in that particular facet with Tyson Fury was Tyson Fury was laying directly on the ground when he first initially laid out his his eyes rolled in the back of his head and you know you have to check the video and see why he chose to keep the keep the time on Tyson Fury to allow him to recover you have to you have to keep it and in no way shape or form people will I sit up here and concur that Jack Reese was out there to give one fighter the fight than the other because he even went over the, the, the first knockout of Deontay Wilder, hitting Tyson Fury on the back of the head. He even went over when Tyson Fury was holding on to Deontay Wilder after he got up from the knockdown and the referee called a fight, called them to fight in. And Deontay Wilder rushed over there and was landing punches. And he shows how Fury was trying to hold on and stall time. And he broke them up immediately. And kept fighting. He said, if I really wanted somebody to win the fight, you know, I could have let them hail and stall the timeout or whatever the case. But he wanted them to fight. He wanted them to leave no question as who the winner was. And it, and it ended up being a draw, being a draw. You know what I'm saying? Um, this weekend is where they settle all that. Whether you like it or not, we're going to settle it. I'm going to do much, much as I possibly can um, to um, have a live, you know, fight extravaganza for this fight. I'm trying to find out. I'm still working, waiting, awaiting word on that. You know, I really want to do special for the World Combat Sports supporters, of course. I truly do. So... This is a big deal. We're going to have some fun. I know I'm going to be on live commentary. Absolutely. I will be on live commentary. And I'm not sure if everybody ordered the fight, but I can guarantee you, you'll be able to see it here. You'll be able to, you, you, I'm not saying you'll be able to see the fight, but you'll be able to hear what's going on, the live commentary, all that. Because for those of you that may not know, if you stream a fight on Facebook or, you, um, or YouTube, and it's a PPV, you will get shut down. And if they look at your other offenses for doing that, they can take your account. They can spin you for 10 days, 15 days. And that's something media cannot afford to do if you're up here suspended. And it's one of your avenues for which you pr produce. You know what I'm saying? Or you put your traffic out there. Just thought I'd let you know. But um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an amazing fight. Um, I'm of course going for the bronze bomb and to go in there and get his 11 defense. I really hope um, his strategy, his team, and everybody else continue to walk that walk and you know bring the guns, the, the gunship to the battle and let them know why you all are so special the way you are, working with the basics but still delivering the huge explosion at the end. You know, that's that's what people don't understand. You know, going to the same gym, gym, having day one ca ca people around you, um, you know, Tyson Fury switching up trainers and everything. What is is it going to truly matter when it comes down to Deontay Wilder? We'll see. We'll see, people. We will see. I mean, I believe this bout right here may break numbers. Don't be amazed. 
I believe this fight right here may move up into the top three of all time bouts ever watched in the sport of boxing. I do believe so, man. And you know, and, and it's even better when when you hear um Tyson Fury's new trainer Stewart saying that um Tyson Fury's gonna knock Wilder out. I mean that 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 adds to the that adds to the um suspense and the intrigue. A lot of people are gonna pick this fight because they it is a lot of knockout talk that's coming opposite of Deontay Wilder. You have Tyson Fury believing that he can now knock out Deontay Wilder when Luis Ortiz couldn't do it for two rounds. You know what I'm saying? When I say two rounds, is that the seventh round, he hurt him for 41 seconds, and then he started the eighth round still on a mission but couldn't get it done. He couldn't get it done. That's fact. Marvin Hagler hopes the Wilder beats Fury. I mean, you know, um, I'm going to take a poll here tomorrow. I'm going to put the poll up and basically try to see what traction I can get from this poll. I really want to see, you know, what people are thinking about when it comes to this fight. So besides that, people, um, it's been a pleasure. I know it's President's Day. Y'all getting ready for work. Real talk. Um, what else before I leave? I really hope Errol Spence come back and fight Manny Pacquiao as possible. Whenever he, he wants to do, I really hope he does. Or whoever. Um, I really hope some, something's going on positive in a 154-pound division with Jason Rosario fighting somebody of notoriety. Um, they said they don't want Jamel Charlo, but God damn it, they need to face somebody. Erickson Lubin, somebody. Face somebody over there. And then the 160, same thing, Jamal Charlo. We, we got to look for that big fight. Now, Canelo fighting Billy Joe Sanders, supposedly. I really don't see what what's that going to do for Canelo, but I see what he's doing. He's just able to pick and choose what he wants, how he wants, and that's it. But I think big time, if Canelo was to, was to try to go over there and take that IBF super middleweight champ, champion from, from Caleb, Caleb Plant, it would be big. Canelo's trying to fight another champion and Caleb Plant. We ain't talking about just no, no run of the mill. If he decides to go up the super middleweight and face Caleb Plant, that would be crucial. Very, very, very crucial. I mean, you have to sit back and just really pendiculate your thought process and see how that fight will play out between Caleb Plant and Canelo Alvarez. But you know what? I truly don't think it's going to happen. Because um, Canelo Alvarez don't want that smoke with Caleb Plant. It ain't going to be no freaking Sergey Kovalev fumbling down in the 11th round like a wildebeest. No, you got paid off, man. Your pockets was heavy. When you when you fell on your, your side like that, you was okay. It was cushion. All the money bands was in there. All the money bands was in your pocket. You didn't get hurt. You was good, Sergey. You was good. The crusher. You know what I'm saying? You was good. Real talk. You was good. You didn't take that loss anyway. You just had to hurry up and go to the bank. But what I do hope he do is make sure he settled that domestic violence case nobody's talking about. That would be the man thing to do out of respect. Any other thing for me that people, as always, you know, any final words for me? Let me see. Have I gotten all my pictures up there i'm just going through some of the um thumbnails the the pictures that i took this past weekend i haven't quite posted the ones with austin Dulate and and diego magdaleno but uh, you can guarantee they're going to be posted um i also have some more ground ground level pictures a miscellaneous Individuals that was there on deck, including your boy Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner is always on deck. 
with the team. Um, you have Mike Stafford, Levi, all those guys out of Cincinnati, you know. Um, Tony Harrison was actually on deck. Him and Caleb Plant are very solid friends. Tony Harrison was on deck yesterday. Um, he had a hoodie on. You know, one thing about Tony Harrison, remember I told you this. Most of the time you see Tony Harrison, he's going to have on a sweat top, sweatpants, and, and, and possibly some Tim's. Or something. That's that's what he dressed in a baseball cap on. That's that's what that's his attire. Real talk. That's what he does, man. I cannot make that up. That's exactly what Tony Harrison does. But I need to ask y'all a favor though. I need for y'all to subscribe to the channel and pass the word. Follow me on all social media platforms. You know what it is. I'm out here grinding, covering media, and also it's gonna come a time that it's it's okay. I may have a low count in here with my lies, but it's going to come a day where that's going to change. You know, I don't get on here every single day because I'm multitasking, but I am going to be consistent. I can guarantee you that to the supporters of World Combat Sports. So y'all just be sure that I'm um, subscribed to the channel um, over 7,000. And I'm going to be real. You know, it's been... It's been a um, cool selling process, man. It's been tough at times with um, getting people to tune in to the content. But also you have other entities out there that may be a little bit of, you know, that thorn bush hate. You know what I'm saying? That splinter right, right beneath your nail. They really ain't trying to support you, even though they see you out here doing things at the fight cars and everything. But you just can't let them even play a primary role. You just got to keep it pushing. You know, you run up on them, you keep it going and keep on focusing on the bigger prize. That's all I can say. Turn up and tune in to World Combat Sports.